The time has come when everyone in the Navy, from the newest recruits on board ship to the officers who are responsible for the ship's safety, must face up to the threat of biological warfare, or BW. Today, BW attacks can be readily launched against us. This cloud, which would actually be invisible, is an aerosol spray. It contains a high concentration of one or more disease-producing agents. Bombs filled with deadly virus or bacteria can be dropped on us. Guided missiles can be equipped with BW warheads. Submerged submarines, after penetrating our harbor defenses, can make aerosol attacks against anchored fleets and harbor facilities. Submarines can also plant BW mines in harbors. Later, the mine rises to the surface and releases an aerosol spray. Aircraft can also lay BW mines. All BW attacks have the same objective, to put some kind of disease-producing organisms or poisons where men work, sleep, or eat. If the enemy succeeds and the attack is undetected, people may become sick and die. Within a week or two, the ability of the ship to fight off other kinds of attacks may be seriously reduced. This film will show you how we are planning to defend Navy personnel from biological warfare attacks and how we can decontaminate our ships. The best defense against biological warfare is the defense that takes place before the germs reach your ship and contaminate everything they touch. It is up to those in command to familiarize themselves with BW tactics and be able to anticipate or recognize a BW attack by close observation of enemy action. The chemical alarm signifies that either a biological or chemical warfare attack has been launched. Your first job is to get your gas mask on. Do it quickly and do it right the first time. Don't forget that your regular job is firing this gun and you can't do it effectively if you have to spend half your time fussing around with your mask. A gas mask is the most important single item of individual protective equipment you have. BW agents, in order to infect you, must get inside your body. If they are in the air you breathe, you draw them into your respiratory tract where they may multiply and cause sickness or death. If they are in something you drink, they get inside your alimentary tract and cause trouble. A gas mask protects you because it filters the BW agents out of the air you breathe. It covers your nose, mouth, and eyes, three of the four main portals through which germs can get inside your body. A fourth portal of entry is any small cut or abrasion in the skin. Unbroken skin is a natural barrier. Any small cut may be an open door through which BW agents enter your body. If no protective clothing is available, your regular clothing can be made to do a good job of protection. Fasten your shirt collar, roll down your sleeves and button your cuffs. Stuff your trousers inside your socks. Although those who work in exposed areas must rely primarily on their masks and clothing for protection, men in enclosed areas have a certain degree of collective protection. Watertight hatches and doors, always closed at general quarters, tend to keep areas below decks relatively free of BW agents. A certain degree of protection below decks will be afforded by electrostatic precipitators, now under development. Located in the fresh air intake system, the precipitator filters out the potentially dangerous airborne particles which might get inside the ship through the ventilation system. In addition to individual and collective protection for the crew, there are tactical defensive measures which help protect the entire ship. For example, if an enemy is discovered in the act of launching a VW attack, the ship can maneuver to get out of the path of the aerosol cloud. Since the cloud itself would become invisible shortly after the spray was released, successful evasion would require close observation 
and immediate action. This ship is equipped with a water curtain, one of numerous kinds of defense equipment being tested. High pressure nozzles literally flood the exposed surfaces of the ship with water. Most of the BW particles which fall on the ship are washed over the side. They never get a chance to contaminate the decks and bulkheads. But you can't always expect to be warned of a BW attack in time to put tactical defense equipment in operation. If the enemy decides to use BW, sneak attacks are to be expected. If the attack is undiscovered, no individual protective measures could be used. But fortunately, every man on board can count on a certain amount of biological protection. Many of the immunization shots you have already received to help ward off diseases spread by natural means will protect you from the same germs when they are spread deliberately by the enemy. A high standard of personal cleanliness is also a part of good biological protection. The expression that too much soap never hurt anybody is especially true if biological warfare is a possibility. Well-balanced meals help build up your resistance to disease. In addition to vaccines and good general health, a degree of protection is afforded by the use of antisera, antibiotics, and chemotherapeutic agents. But in spite of these and other protective measures, a successful sneak attack will probably cause casualties. The first indication that a sneak attack has been made may be a sudden increase in the number of men on the binnacle list. The doctor will find that all the cases are similar. He will be unable to discover any natural cause for the outbreak and will assume that a BW attack has taken place. The doctor will be able to recognize most of the diseases by the symptoms they produce and identify the BW agent used. Blood samples from infected men are sent by the fastest possible means of transportation to a hospital ship or shore station for examination. If some men become critically ill, they would be transferred to a hospital ship as soon as practicable. If the ship is warned of an attack in advance, damage control personnel will be able to collect samples of the BW agents the enemy was using. This is an air sampling kit. To collect a sample, the operator first puts liquid in an impinger. Next, he prepares two molecular filters, one for the impinger and one to be left exposed to catch any BW agents which might fall on it. This tube contains nutrients, food for the bacteria to grow on. He fits one of the filters on the impinger and puts the impinger cover in place. He removes the cotton plug. Then connects the impinger to the pump. The pump draws air through the impinger and BW agents are trapped in the liquid. When the impinger is inverted, the liquid is drawn through the filter and bacteria is caught on it. Smaller BW agents, such as virus, stay in the liquid. After all the liquid is drawn out, the bacteria-laden filter is removed and returned to its container.
both filter containers are capped. The liquid from the impinger is also put in a container and the samples are prepared for shipment. They are sent to a laboratory on a hospital ship or to a shore station for analysis. In the laboratory, the samples would be tested. In some cases, it might be necessary to inject laboratory animals to identify the BW agent. The results of the laboratory analysis will be sent back to the ship. Now the doctor is certain of what he is fighting. Patients will receive treatment designed specifically to combat the BW agent used by the enemy. Other members of the ship's crew may receive inoculations which cut down their chances of being infected. BW agents also contaminate the exposed surfaces of a ship. Even with a water curtain installation, some BW agents will cling to decks, bulkheads, and ship's equipment. Surfaces which are contaminated can continue to spread infections by giving off secondary aerosols. Anybody working in a contaminated area might become infected. As soon as battle conditions permit, crew members are evacuated from the contaminated area. The area is roped off and signs posted to warn other members of the ship's company to stay out. Then the decontamination crews go to work. BW agents which cling to the surface are either killed or washed over the side. A swab test will tell how thoroughly the area has been decontaminated. While the decontamination crews clean up the ship, men from the contaminated areas go to their assigned personnel decontamination station. The first area inside is the undressing and first aid area. Take off your clothes carefully. Remember that they are contaminated. Put them in one of the containers provided. Take off your gas mask last. The outside of it is contaminated too, so be sure your face does not touch the contaminated part. Don't touch your eyes, nose, mouth, or any part of your face with your hand. Next, take a shower with the water as hot as you can stand. Use plenty of soap. Green soap is best. Next, go to the dressing area. Clean clothes are available for you. Put them on and don't worry about the possibility of being infected. You're pretty safe if you did what you were supposed to do. To protect yourself from biological warfare at all times, remember, put your gas mask on when ordered to do so. Maintain a high standard of personal cleanliness. Have faith in your Navy doctor. And follow decontamination procedure carefully. And finally, don't worry about BW. Don't let the threat of an attack destroy your morale. That's also one of the objectives of biological warfare. <laughs>